start. Before we move on to the derivative, but it is a new chapter called derivative of exponential logarithmic function. Let's draw this picture you see, you just I just showed you on the screen, which looks like this: x and y exponential function y equals a to the x typically looks like this. It grows to infinity really fast, but shrinks to the asymptote zero on the left. On the right grows up. On the left shrinks to zero, but never hits zero and goes to the point zero one. Inverse function, we actually never teach you this because we're skipping the whole chapter of inverse functions. When we're introducing the logarithmic function, that is inverse to it. To draw an inverse function, you need to draw the function called y equals x. y equals x is this function with 45 degrees. Well, it's already not true, but okay. With a dashed line, like so. You draw y equals x. And basically, y equals x means we're flipping x and y. The inverse function flips the whole situation. The input becomes output, output becomes input. So this is the function y equals log base a x, like so. But actually, we flipped x and y, uh, which function. The function which we are going to draw right now using this dash line as a mirror, which looks like this. It doesn't have an asymptote on the right. It's actually growing to infinity, but slowly. Because like I mentioned before, logarithm, logarithm function is the slowest one in what we know in our list of the classes. It goes through 1 and 0 because log at 1 is 0. And it also has an asymptote, but now it's a vertical asymptote, not horizontal as before. Vertical asymptote, x equals 0, while this exponential function has horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. So they completely mirroring each other. y equals x works as a mirror to have a reflection. Let me put it in blue. Reflection. So we're using as a mirror. And that's how you create two graphs. So good job, whoever noticed. That this animation, let me switch back for a second, shows you exponential function in blue and logarithmic function in green. Both of them go to infinity. Do not think that this has some kind of asymptote. Not really. They both grow to infinity, but nobody in the movie will say, oh my gosh, this is so scary. This meteor is going to hit us because its speed is logarithmic. No. Exponential speed is the fast one. Logarithmic speed is very slow. It goes to infinity, but slowly. These lines represent what? Guess. Guess what these lines do and why they're moving. Yes. They're the derivative. They are derivatives. Lines represent the equation of, represent lines, tangent lines. Tangent means kissing at one point. Tangent translates as kiss. So you see this point? Tangent line touches the graph of the function at one point. And we remember if tangent is positive, the graph of the function is growing, increasing, negative, decreasing. That is why these lines are growing up. And the steeper the function is, the more vertical the tangent line is. And in this case, it was steep at the beginning for log, but then it becomes less steep. So it becomes more parallel, you see? Interesting. So we need to learn how to differentiate logarithmic and exponential functions. That is a fun topic. I think you will enjoy it today. Let's write down, I have a nice table in this computer, or if you want, I can just write it down for you. But uh, I think handwritten is easier to understand. Derivatives, we're just going to jump into the formulas and practice them, which is very interesting. I will tell you a joke right now, which I always tell in my classes. When you differentiate e to the x, exponential function is so fast, then if you ask a question, how fast is the exponential function? The answer will be exponentially fast which sounds like a redundant sentence, but that's the case. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And I'll tell you the very old Soviet anecdote after this to remember this formula. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's as speed as itself. A very interesting idea. We learn that exponential functions sometimes have different base. Then you still copy, so it's still a copy of itself, but in times, natural log of a. This is actually the original formula. 
if you clear if you look at for a second you will see that when a is e ln of e is 1 so technically speaking there is ln of e over here but we just don't write it down because it's 1 that is derivative of uh, exponential functions formula number let's call them number 1 and number 2 how about logarithmic function when you are differentiating a log function uh, oh I will actually also point out a chain rule chain rule your favorite rule right it's chain rule <laughs> today on Wednesday I'm having exam in my calculus 3 class and we have three dimensional chain rule and three dimensional chain rule is a killing tool people very scared about it <laughs> so I was practicing today to do it again in three dimensions chain rule is really complicated with chain rule we you will have e to the u where u is some kind of function differentiate that with exactly the same idea of the channel I told you before differentiate first the way you know it and I just told you that you need to copy exponential function because e to the x gives you e to the x but then channel says don't stop and do times the derivative of the function inside so I'm looking at u and differentiating u so you copy the function and then you differentiate the exponent that's not a new formula it's just chain rule explained in details yes prime yeah good question this is prime so it's a derivative if you want it better I can do d dx right but uh, it's kind of nice short notation so I like primes yeah good question yes but why is a to the x, a to the x times l to the a, isn't the derivative of x always 1? No. Oh, yeah. This is the base have to be calibrated a little bit. If the base is not e, you have to multiply by l and a, and a can be 5, 0 0.5, and so on. This confused as to why the chain rule, rule does not apply here. It applies to, he is asking, Chris is asking about a more complicated case a to the u will be first you differentiate the way you know it copy times ln a that is the part we just know from the formula i just showed you this is u not 4 times the derivative of the function in the exponent u prime okay so you're dealing with in the eventuality yeah that u that yeah. u is not just a X. It's a function. Yeah, yeah. So you is a function. U is a function. Thank you. Good that question. Is, yeah. Very good question. Logs. When you differentiate logs, also fun stuff happens. Ln of x prime is you look at everything inside in your input, like so over here. And you just divide by everything inside of that input. 1 over x derivative of bless you. that was a very good thing <laughs> uh, derivative of log is 1 over x ln of course so guess what of course we have to also take into account different bases so if you have log the base a or b that doesn't matter log base a x you first do exactly what I told you, 1 over everything inside, which is x. But then you have to kind of fix the situation that the base is not e. So you're also dividing by ln a. Usually people put it in the common, in the same denominator. Again, ln of a is 1 if a, if a is e. So it works. So, and that's just combining the change of base formula with the... Uh yeah, also with change of base of formula, it works. I'll call it com formula 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Same with the chain rule idea. It's not a new formula when I do chain rule. Chain rule just says, differentiate the function outside, ln u. ln u. I know how to differentiate ln u. It's 1 over u. I just showed it to you. But then don't forget to do times the derivative of the function inside, and that is u prime. 
And we're going to practice all of this right now, so don't be scared too much. We're going to practice examples, and you will see it's actually pretty fun. I don't know. I like it. I, these topics are kind of fun. Let's do it. Let's do lots of cool examples, and then you will see it's uh, interesting to do. Example one. For example, logarithmic functions 35 ln x prime. Find the derivative of this. Very interesting. So 35 is multiplied by a function, and you remember it's just like a sticker. It stays. It will not give you zero. Then derivative of log is 1 over x. Then the whole result is 35 over x. How, do you, how about that? Did you see? So I found the input of my log, and I divided by that input, because derivative of log is 1 over x. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Agree? Then tricky question. What is derivative of 35 ln of 35? What do you think is that? Zero. How do you know it's zero? It's a number. It's a number, so it's a tricky question. Good job. It's a constant. ln of 35 is some kind of number. So pay attention. It's not 1 over 35 times 35. Constant speed is zero. That's like a catchy question. Specifically, Good job for noticing. Specifically, is the number going to be e, the resulting number e? What? Well, 35 times ln to 35 would be e, right? Well, we're talking about derivatives. But yeah, it's some number. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's not e. It's not, yeah. How about this case? ln of 35x inside. Now, that is a hard question. Let's see how we're going to do it carefully. Derivative of log is 1 over everything I see inside of the log. So I'm going to divide by the 35x. 1 over 35x. Then I notice that this is a function. Let's call it u. Chain rule tells me don't stop and differentiate the function inside of the log. Derivative of 35x is 35. So somehow it still ended up to be 1 over x because 35 cancel out with 1 over 35. Very interesting. Derivative of log x is 1 over x and derivative of the constant times x is still 1 over x because it just simplifies. It's a slow function. The function is slow, derivative gives you 1 over x. 1 over x is also a slow function. And now let's practice something which you're actually going to see on the test in, in your homework. Four. What is a natural logarithm? Let's do, usually we give you natural logarithms. Let's do seven. Natural logarithm of three x squared plus five x minus ten. Find the derivative of this. It looks scary, but it's actually not. Let's see. 7 survives, and then the whole fraction will show up. You see everything inside of the log, divide by all that stuff, and don't touch it, just divide by it. 3x squared plus 5x minus 10 goes to the denominator. Then Changel says, oh, this is a function. Don't forget to differentiate u, which is the function inside of the log. Derivative of u is 6x plus 5. So I usually, to save space, write down everything as one fraction right away. 3x squared plus 5x minus 10. 7 multiplied by 6x plus 5. You can distribute, but this is actually the final answer. This is also looks good. 7 stayed there because it's a constant. Let me put it in this color. So it just survived because it was multiplied by a function. 1 over 3x squared plus 5x minus 10. It's part of the log differentiation times 6x plus 5. That's chain rule. Does that make sense? So there's three things to keep in mind here. You could simplify this. No, it's good like this. I like a factored form, to be honest. Questions? What do you think? I don't want to move too fast. Today is a very good class to cover this slowly and in steps. No, not too bad. Either it's not too bad or you're falling asleep. Don't sleep yet. 
sleep in 10 minutes uh, or after the cleanse. Log base 5 of x squared plus sine x, pom pom pom. We start combining logarithmic and exponential functions and trigonometric functions. Let's see what is the speed of that. I first see there's a function inside of the log and I'm dividing by whatever it is without even thinking too much. See? Just one over everything inside. Log of blah, 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 blah. It may be like five different functions there. One over everything. Then I'm noticing that the, the base is not E, so I have to also divide by the natural log of the base. So to fix the situation that base is not E, I'm dividing by natural log of 5. With exponential function, you multiply by the natural log of the base. And then one more step. This is U, so it's a function inside of the log, chain rule, chain rule. So before that, it was not chain rule. Before that, it was just working with logarithmic function. Chain rule says, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, which is 2x plus or minus what? Plus cosine x, good job. Derivative of sine is cosine. How about this? And then usually, usually people put it all in one fraction because it looks way too much, it takes too much space like this. 2x, 2x plus cosine x came from chain rule over x squared plus sine x. That came from differentiating log 1 over everything inside. And over ln5, that came from having different base than e. It was not a natural logarithm. Last step is not necessary, but it takes less space. So usually I use it, and my students usually get used to it and then write it as one fraction. Very nice. How about that? Not too bad. One over everything. Such a convenient function. How fast logarithmic function is? One over the everything inside fast. And that's the weird part of it, but it is, it works like that. Exponential ones. So we just learned that if you differentiate e to the x, just copy it. Simple as that. Just copy it. But if you differentiate with a different base, also copy it and then multiply by the natural log of the base. Still copy and then multiply by the natural log of the base. Logarithm divides, exponential multiplies. So very old Soviet anecdote. Uh, I always tell in my calculus one classes. It's so old that my professor told me the joke. His professor told him this joke, so I don't know how old it is. But uh, it's not funny anymore in my country, but it's funny here because nobody knows. <laughs> the joke is about the madhouse. There's a house with crazy people inside, right? And then there are at least two mathematicians there, which is already part of the joke that it's not surprising that there are some mathematicians in the madhouse. So, and then one of them is aggressive and he keep running around and then yelling at all other patients saying, I'm gonna differentiate you. I'm gonna differentiate you. And then I'm gonna differentiate you. So, you know, he got insane. Other patients do not know what it means. So they are afraid and, and go hide. Except one patient, he was keep sitting and he was, keep sitting at the table. So the doctor was curious about it. He approached that patient and he asked, why are you not afraid? He is going to differentiate you. And guess what he says? I'm not afraid, I'm e to the x. Ha <laughs> ha. So it's a very nice joke, it helps you to remember the differentiation. The funny thing that we're gonna do integration soon and this joke has different pattern in the integration. And in calculus three, this joke actually has continuation and adds badly. In calculus three, he says, but I'm going to differentiate you with respect to t, and that means it's zero. And that's what we teach in multivariable calculus. So my students were very happy that I repeated this joke a year and a half later, explaining it into multivariable calculus. So remember this. Remember this joke. Maybe it will help you to remember the formula. Not a joke that in my department in Ukraine, math department was the only department that had our own psychologist. It was uh, right below, before my generation though. Before my generation, I knew, I was told in the second floor, there was our own psychologist, only math department had it. And then they eliminated it 
Probably it was a bad idea because one professor did jump out of the sixth window, sixth floor window. But um, yeah, just for you to know, math majors are a little bit crazy. Everyone know that. Thirteen E. Let's. Right. Like Chris, Chris was just telling me all about the unsolvable math problems, and you have to be a little bit insane to even approach them. Yeah. No, no, but also that when you, when you prove it can't be solved, yeah, yeah. that's good news. Yeah, yes. What is the derivative of 13 e to the x? The easiest question you can get in the world. What do you think it is? <coughs> 13 e to the x. How fast is the function e to the x times 13 grows? Oh, as fast as itself. Very nice, very nice. But, and then but starts means something gonna be different. 13 e to the 13 x. Okay, that requires chain rule. How do I know? Because there's a function hidden inside over here and that's going to be my u but let's not think about it first first i just see it's 13 multiplied by the exponential function and i know the derivative of exponential function is exponential function so i just copy it then chain rule happens chain rule says oh there's a function at over there on the top don't forget to differentiate that derivative of 13x is 13. And that is nice property that the more derivatives you take, if you take second derivative, it will be times 13 one more time. Third derivative, it will be times 13 one more time. So it's 13 squared, 13 cubed, and so on. So it's pretty cool that the more you differentiate, the more times this constant pops out. And you multiply by that constant. Three. Third one is... What is e to the 13 prime? That's very hard. Zero, thank you. It's a constant. So be part of this game. Make sure you understand what is the difference. There is no input, then it's a constant. What kind of constant? It's approximately 2.7 raised to the 13. It's a constant. What is the speed of the constant? Zero. What is the derivative of 1 over e to the 35? Prime. Spell zero. Uh, X. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> Good catch. This is such a question. <laughs> yeah, it uh, immediately became harder, like in a second. So if you don't know, you wanted a quotient rule? Yeah, don't do it. Quotient rule is overthinking this. You rewrite it as e to what exponent? negative 35x and then it becomes exactly the problem we just did before it doesn't really matter what sign that part has derivative of e you copy it so you just copy the whole thing and then times the derivative of the function inside what is derivative of minus 35x negative 35 and this is the answer so this is a very pleasant problems to work at home and they are good for the exam purposes and so on how about this one? Let's see if you get this one. Six times e x cosine x. So you see I'm combining trigonometric functions with exponential. How fast this function grows? What do you think is going on here? Let's see. You first see six is multiplied, so we keep it. Then you see exponential function, so you're copying it. Then chain will start. Channel says, don't forget, there's a function inside, and this function is x times cosine x. Differentiate that. That requires what? Product rule. Oh, yeah. You all recognize it? x is a function, cosine x is a function. Derivative of x is 1. Copy cosine plus copy x. Derivative of cosine is? Negative sign. Thank you. Good job. And you don't have to actually simplify it, but if you want, you can. So that is a pretty cool idea here. I forgot how complicated it gets. Like, yes, um, yes. You can put lots of stuff inside, outside, product, quotient, all of that kind of stuff. Let's practice more questions, but definitely stop me if you think it's too hard or too fast. Okay, let's do random stuff now. Random stuff, let's not divide into different cases and then just differentiate everything we want. 
Random stuff is find the derivative, find y prime if, and then we give you a function, y equals 5 to the x plus 10 minus a square root. Let's do fifth root. A fifth root of the logarithm of 10 minus x squared at x equals 1. So it's a slope. Well, they actually ask us to find slope. Derivative at the point is a slope. Solution. Okay, let's do that. y prime equals, and I'll wait for you to write it down, and you tell me what we should do. Well, first, we're, first, we need to differentiate all the things. All the things piece by piece. So what is derivative of 5 to the x? Who knows? 5 to the x. 5 to the x, L and 5. Agree, disagree, or questions? Or you want to add something? 5 to the x is exponential function, so you immediately copy it, copy, and then ln of the base, because 5 is not e. Make sense? 10 gives you 0, that was easy, and then the hard part starts now. <laughs> How would we do the fifth root of the logarithmic function? Any ideas? Just a second, maybe some more, yes. One fifth. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Looked over. Yes. One fifth natural log uh, ten, ten minus x squared. Ten minus negative four fifths. To the negative four fifths. Okay, let's see how did you do it. Did you rewrite or you just know it right away? What? I would rewrite the original function. I'm curious if you doing it right away or you rewriting the original function. I would rewrite the original function, because I know you can do it in your mind, because you're good at this. Uh, I would rewrite it as one fifth. Did you do this, or you just do it right away? I sort of do it quickly. Yeah, I see. I knew that you did it in your head, because I know you. So um, either you do it in your head, one fifth goes down, copy the whole thing, subtract one from one fifth. Or you can rewrite it slowly. So it will be ln 10 minus x squared raised to the 1 fifth. You're rewriting original function, you see? This is my original one. Then 1 fifth goes down, copy the whole thing. Because chain rule says you cannot touch the function inside until you finish the power rule first. Now, so yeah, good job, thank you so much. Don't forget the negative sign in front, because it was there times the derivative of the function inside. Now I see logarithmic function. It basically has three Russian dolls. The outside Russian doll was a root. Next Russian doll is logarithmic function. Logarithmic function says, just divide by the everything you see inside of me. Like so. I see 10 minus x squared, divide by that. And then the last Russian doll says, well, there's also 10 minus x squared. So it's times the derivative of the 10 minus x squared, which is minus 2x, which I usually put on the top of the fraction right away. But then your notes will be complicated, so I don't want to do it. But it saves space if you did it. Good job. Do you guys, uh, anyone have questions? What do you think? This was just a derivative of that log. Log was inside of the uh, fifth power, fifth root, and there's a polynomial inside of the log. So it's a function inside of the function, inside of the function. That's why we have chain rule twice. Chain rule. Chain rule twice. Does it make sense? What do you think? Then we need to plug one. So let's find derivative at one. Five to the one, it's just five. Ln 5, that's a constant, minus 1 fifths ln of 10 minus 1 squared raised to the minus 4 fifths times 1 over 10 minus 1 times minus 2. And you just calculate whatever it is. I would keep it as exact answer. 5 ln 5 minus and I would put like a huge fraction like so. 
Maybe we could even put logarithmic function at the bottom. 10 minus 1 is 9. There's minus 2 over here, right? And times 9. Anyway, that doesn't really matter, to be honest. But exponent on the first five. Oh, this is one. So I'm plugging one. It says calculate at one. So we're finding slope. It's actually M. I was just wondering what I missed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I like saying that. Don't forget, don't be afraid to ask what just happened because sometimes you drop the pen and when you think, when you go to pick it up, you see something, lots of stuff on the board. Yes. What about the negative four fifths? Negative four fifths is over here. Thank you. Four fifths. Good job. So negative goes to the bottom and then times nine because one over 10 minus one. How about that? Differentiating stuff like that. Kind of fun, but a little bit uh, too much. Too many things, too many steps. But it's nice if you understand them. That is pretty cool. More stuff. Let's do some more stuff. For example, do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? That was example number one. Example number two. Do you see the difference between x to the 7 and 7 to the x? That is also an interesting question. And also e to the 7. Right? So derivative of this, let's see carefully. X to the 7, this is something took me a while to understand when I was a freshman. If you have, if you have input, that's X, raised to a number, let's call number like this kind of number, right? Number. Then it's called polynomial, kind of like X to the 5, right? Something like that. X to the 5, X to the 17. But if you have a number raised to the input, that means that that is exponential function, like uh, 5 to the x. See the difference? So that is interesting that one function is slowly changing, while exponential function is really fast, exploding to infinity function. So we need to have some intuition and see the difference. x to the 7 is which one? Polynomial. Derivative of x to the 7 is? 7x to the 6, thank you. 7 goes down, decrease the power. 7 to the x is, how would you call it? Exactly. It's exponential function with different base. So you copy and then fix the base. And by fixing, I mean multiply by the natural log of the base. So copy and then log of the base. What is e to the x called? It's still exponential function, uh, but not a function though. Exponential constant, right? e to the 7 derivative gives you 0. How about that? What do you feel about this kind of idea? Polynomial, exponential function, exponential constant, or just a natural exponent. Here. Not too bad, not too bad or horrible or it's being annoying and I want to go home kind of stuff. <laughs> People start smiling, that means it's, it's the last one. <laughs> Just a sec, yeah, you can. So let's do more. Y equals five e to the x plus six raised to the mm, yeah, minus eight. y prime is okay so i can do it as many times as you want but you have to try to be part of this process because it will help you the most what function do you see first what should we do first the power rule exactly this is u raised to the minus eight and i don't see u yet i pretend i don't see it so this is like something is inside, okay? And I don't see it. I know the idea of the power rule. It's minus 8, copy, and then minus 7 or 9? Nine? 9. Decrease by 1. We know chain rule. Copy the function inside, which, technically speaking, I know what it is. 
it is 5 e to the x plus 6. So don't touch it until you finish working with the power rule or the function outside. Channel says now multiply by the derivative of the function inside. What is derivative of 5 e to the x plus 6? 5 e to the x. And that is the answer. How about that? What do you think? I think it's not too bad. That's why I like this topic. Students usually doing good in these chapters. 5 times 8 is minus 40 e to the x over 5 e to the x plus 6 raised to the 9. That is not a necessary uh, step to rewrite it in a denominator. I never forced students to do that. How about that? Not too bad, not too bad. Let's do one more. But and let me know if I need to slow down. One more is going to be 4x squared times e to the x squared minus 2x. The function looks so short, but it will require product rule and chain rule and exponential function. y equals y prime is this is the product rule so you see u times v or whatever you learned f times g i like u times v product rule tells me differentiate the first function that is 8x copy the second function that is e x squared minus 2x u prime v Plus, copy the first function, differentiate the second one. Copying is easy, 4x squared, but derivative of v will be interesting. See how smartly I avoided to use the word complicated. It's interesting. Derivative of e is e. Remember the anecdote, which is not very funny. You just copy the whole thing. The derivative of exponential function is the exponential function. Should I stop or something more? Something more. Times, thank you, chain rule. Chain rule is the derivative of this function. That's just x squared minus 2x. So the answer is 2x minus 2. Amazing. And that is the answer. Behold, u prime v plus u v prime. Yeah, some simplification. To be honest, every time you're working with exponential functions, you can factor out this exponential function because it's always the same. Exponential function sooner or later gives it itself. So it is a convenient step and some people do. You will see in your homework, the solution will show you the factored form. So I will show you. I don't require it, but in your homework, it might get confusing. Why the answer looks like this? Because the exponential function is repeated several times, so you can factor it out. The answer will be 8x for the left part plus 4x squared times 2x minus 2 for the right part. And that is a unique property of the exponential function. Since when you differentiate exponential, it gives you itself, even though if it's chain rule or log is involved, you can factor it out from everywhere. And that is pretty cool. So in general, how fast was that uh, exponential function. It was exponentially fast times something, something, something. Pretty cool idea here. And we still have a couple minutes left. Let's do these popular problems from the tests. I do recognize them from the test, so it's nice to practice these. How about y equals ln x over x? <laughs> Implicit differentiation, don't forget. It's all getting there, actually. We're going to do implicit differentiation. That will be harder. Derivative of this is, that is quotient rule. You could use uh, product rule. Do you know how? If you rewrite x to the minus 1. But it's not necessarily easier. So let's do quotient rule. u over v. I always start with a squaring the denominator. Do not touch it. Just square it and keep it as it is. Some people start uh, distributing things. No, square it and leave it. Then I recommend starting with the derivative of the top of the fraction. Derivative of log is 1 over x. We just learned it. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Copy the denominator. That is x. 
minus is part of the formula. Copy the numerator, that's n and x, times derivative of the denominator, which is 1. This simplifies into a very elegant result. x squared is, is in the denominator. You can cancel out x and 1 over x because x cannot be 0. Neither from this part or this part, x is not 0 because it's inside of the log and in the denominator. Because we cannot cancel out uh, zeros, actually. So it will be, what is the answer? Ln x over x squared. Not really. One minus. This is actually a pretty common mistake. People, or people, let me call people students. Students get excited. It go cancel out, and they think it's zero because your brain feels happy about it. But they actually, it's still one. So be careful with that. I do see this mistake uh, quite often. Very nice. And finally, I will show you this part and see if you understand it. And then I guess it's good for tonight. Six. Look at this. So if I'm throwing, throwing at you a function that's called h, and it's going to be log base 7 of 3x to the 4 minus 5x plus x cubed, and I'm taking derivative of that. Let me wait for you to finish. Hello. Do you know how Russians say hello? We say alo. With an annoying voice, usually like "alo," like some, some kind of aggressive Russian voice. So let's see if you understand this. The answer will be: see how fast you can do it, and you will be able to do it. One over everything inside. I know that part. Then also over the ln of the base to fix the situation that the base was not e times the derivative of the function inside, which is 12x cubed minus 5 plus 3x squared. Too fast, or you understand this? 5, 12x cubed minus 5 plus 3x squared, right? Yeah. Oh, did I miss something? Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I got it, I got it. Good job. Do you understand this? So it's a very nice short way to write it down, but you need to know which piece came from what. The denominator comes from derivative of the log. The numerator is pure chain rule. That's all. See you guys on Wednesday. Just a second.